Well, I started out being interested in energy, and I still really am interested in energy more broadly. And that came out of really my interest in the history of the family. Because what was so clear to me when I first started researching the history of the family was all the work that people, but particularly women, had done that actually wasn't considered doing anything at all. So um, I had been thinking for a long time about just how do we understand and categorize the kind of work that I now would call work of the informal economy, like outside of the commodification of labor, outside of you know selling your labor and receiving money for it. So part of my interest in energy was just that study of like another way of thinking about what people do all day, how they spend their time, is to really focus on how are they getting the energy that they need in order to survive as um, beings. So that was um, that was partly how how um, how I got interested in, in fossil fuels and energy. The other branch of my interest is my work as a rural historian, and so. Um, one of the big differences between rural and urban society in the late 19th and 20th century is in different kinds of energy use. Uh, rural societies were much later than urban societies to use most, not all, of, of the new forms of energy, the new fossil fuels. And the reasons for that are not because rural people are naturally backward and cautious and don't like new things. It's because most of the modern energy comes through really complex and elaborate networks that work really well in small condensed spaces like urban areas and don't work so well over the tundra or the prairies or uh, our spaces are just too large in, in Canada for those. They do work now, but it took probably 70 years more uh, later that these changes happened in, in rural areas because of that. So those two areas of my interest, which are the history of the family and rural history, kind of converge on energy. And actually, the, the energy stuff came directly from oral histories that I, I did with people when I was interviewing people for an earlier project on the history of Salt Spring Island. Um, those, everybody wanted to tell me about when they first got electricity. And first, I could tell that they really wanted me to be shocked that they didn't get electricity till the 1960s or late 50s, for the most part. And it was such a big deal to them. And I kept thinking, like, why, why are they so keen to tell me about when they got electricity? Like, is this some like, coded message for modernity? Or like, what is it? And now, looking back, and these were interviews I did in the early 90s, um, now looking at it, it's because it made such a huge, huge transition in, in, in people's lives. The impact of fossil fuels and hydroelectricity in, in Canada, we have to add that because um, all, most of our energy, electrical energy, was from, from hydropower until quite recently. So it's just, it's transformed, uh, you know, it really has transformed people's lives. So all those advertisements from the early 20th century that said, electricity will allow you to live like a king, that's not quite true, but actually the reason that our society is so incredibly wealthy compared to any other human society um, ever, I mean, with more people being that wealthy, is because of these new new forms of energy and power that have replaced um, human labor. Like it is true, with a flick of a switch, we can you know light a room. It used to be quite a complicated procedure to light a room, and in fact, nobody really did light a room. They would light a little part of a room where they were where they were working or where they had a particular task. It was the same with heating. Most people never heated an entire room, let alone an entire house. They just would heat the place where they were, or they would be where the heat was, say, around the, the kitchen stove. So, so that's, uh, to me, the history, well, at this point in my research, um, everything is about energy. <laughs> but in, in a sense, everything is about energy, how we find energy, how we use energy. Um, and of course, now we're living with the byproducts of that decision that we made as a society to move from organic forms of energy, like wood, wind, water. We still, of course, have food that so far is still organic, for the most part. Um, but we're living with the consequences of fossil fuels, which are totally, totally different from organic 